What matters when dealing with a patellar tendinopathy is decreasing pain and getting back to function. People can get an obsession with their imaging, and this is a bad thing. If you look at this study, asymptomatic college basketball players, they looked at 34 knees, and they found that eight of them showed a signal on the patellar tendon. On an MRI, it had an abnormality to the structure, but they had no symptoms. They had no pain. In another study, they looked at 95 male college basketball players, and they found that 32 of them had abnormalities on imaging and only 20 of them had patellar tendon pain so there were a lot of college basketball players playing with patellar tendon abnormalities but they had no symptoms they had no pain in this study they looked at asymptomatic athletes in a bunch of different sports they had 320 athlete tendons versus 54 control people tendons who were not in sports and they found that the patellar tendon will have abnormalities in tendons is more likely to happen in athletes it's more likely to happen in male athletes and it's more likely to happen in basketball players so none of these people had any pain but being a male and playing basketball makes it more likely that you have these abnormalities versus a control person so as far as pain and function are concerned, having the abnormalities, having the pathology with your patellar tendon, all it is is a risk factor for having pain and having bad function. Here's a clip from my podcast with Peter Marlieris on his approach to pain, function, and imaging. We don't know a lot about the different types of pathology, but we know that it probably isn't going to completely resolve and, your, and their pain and function can get better. So, um, so we focus on the pain and function getting better. And, uh, you know, if, if the pathology improves, and in, in a lot of people it does improve, that's a bonus. I've had some really, really good learning points over the last few years where I can see people coming back after I haven't seen them for five years or something like that. And I often see the tendon looks much better on scanning. Whether the tendon just takes a very, very, very long time to adapt, uh, whether it partially adapts, uh, whether we're not doing the right things to make it adapt faster, we just don't know at the moment. So instead of obsessing what your tendon might look like on imaging, I'm going to tell you what you should be doing to decrease pain and to improve function of the tendon. You should be using the four-stage process. Start with isometrics, go into isotonics, go into energy storage and release, and then back to sport. If you're worried about adapting this specific tendon, you're going to do it in the isometric phase, and you can use all the Keith Barr concepts to do that. And you can do isometrics year-round. What you should be doing, strengthen the quadriceps. Those are inhibited with patellar tendinopathy. Strengthen the calves. Those are inhibited with patellar tendinopathy. You should be doing biomechanical stuff. Look at the rib cage. Look at the hip and the pelvis. Look at the foot and the ankle. These are all individual things based on your training and injury history. Then you should be doing low-intensity jumps. Do them year-round so the patellar tendon stays adapted to that. And always manage the high-intensity jumps, max effort jumps. So try that out. That is better than obsessing over the imaging.